We're going to talk about VPM adjustment. Um, this is what I would do on a machine that uh, if, if this AVSP is fully adjustable from, let's say, if it's mating up to a dial or mating up to a conveyor system, what have you, if you have control over the, uh, the ASP with the VPM as a unit in relationship to whatever it is that you are uh, putting your part on, then this is the particular procedure that I would use. <coughs> I start off with uh, making sure that my machine is relatively level from the base here. I'm just using a, uh, an old combination square. It's got a level in it. And I take note as to where the bubble is. Right now the, the bubble's touching the left line. And uh, um, I would <coughs> want to square this rotary off first. And you have to... Uh, uh, oh, I should mention too that I've, I've disconnected the, uh, the two ports and I have a regulator that I'm just feeding uh, one of the ports to hold it in. And uh, like this lower port rotates it to the right and uh, you would use this top shock stop as an adjustment for the rotary here being as how it is a uh, two racks with the gear in the middle so right now if we have air on the bottom it's it's racking this way and we're stopping the top rack for how far it goes to the right now if I wanted to check it out the other direction I would simply move my air source to the other side put my air back up here and now it's <clears throat> now that we have this rack the air going this way we're using the lower screw to adjust the verticalness here now this one here looks looks very good it doesn't really need adjustment I'm going to go back to the other direction back my air off and I think we're going to go ahead and adjust the uh, got at least 50 pounds of pressure on it now it appears that it's tipped down slightly yeah now you're gonna need a uh, 14 millimeter on this particular size rotary and uh, you'll need a, a flat blade screwdriver uses bigger one that you can fit in the slot it's a decent sized slot on it I don't know if you can see I'm going to move it kind of radically you can see how it rotates back and forth okay and I get my bubble in the same position as it was down on the chassis so that way I know that it's parallel to the chassis base okay the next step we would do is to set our height now I'm going to reposition the camera but there is uh, I don't know if I really have to or not but there's four screws on the back side of this so this whole unit is slotted to go square up and down there's a there's a key I don't know if you can see it here or not but, uh, so the whole thing is keyed, you can see it right here. So it stay, keeps it perfectly square. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, we're going to align the height of, uh, of this VPM tooling to the mandrel. And it's like we'll have to fine tune it to where it has the, uh, right now there's a, a slight mismatch in the, uh, in the height of the two. So we're going to go ahead and these are uh, quarter 20 so take the 3 16 Allen wrench and we're gonna go ahead and loosen those up all right right now I've got the four bolts the quarter 20 bolts that hold this just slightly snug and I'm able to be able to tap this down you can see that uh, we have air uh, holding this thing we still have our air holding it level so if we knock this thing down a little bit 
We want to go till just couples up nicely. Now, if, even if yours, uh, if your base of your arm isn't uh, quite adjusted yet or not quite right, so it may not couple up uh, this well. Just look for the levelness across the top of the mandrel and across the top of the VPM tooling. It's like, because uh, we may not have it in and out correctly this way, or it might even be a little bit on an angle, but it's, we're just looking for height right now. And so you want uh, it to be as close as you can get it to where uh, when it when it's final adjusted, it'll couple up like this. So we're going to go ahead and snug that up now. At the base of our VPM arm, you can see that there are five sixteenths uh, socket head cap screws. There's a quantity of four of them. There's uh, slotted holes that they they go through and mount into the uh, the base plate. And uh, I'm going to move the camera to show what we're looking for. Okay, while adjusting this arm, you have to make sure that it not only you're going back and forth, but it can uh, there's some room for it to go out of square. So we're looking for, uh, I like to push the mandrel in pretty close to the near flush on the stripper jaws so that way it's as stable as possible. And uh, once again I still have the rotary air just holding it up into this position so I know it's, it's uh, as far tipped up as it's going to go. And uh, in order to check the squareness I'll use the top face of, this, of the head here and this edge of the body. I'll just bring my combination square on in here, hold it up against the uh, that front cover plate, and I can check to make sure that I'm relatively square this way and I'm not too far one way or the other. Now this all looks pretty good here. This is uh, quite square and it also is good left to right to where it's coupling up to our uh, our transfer mandrel there. Our transfer mandrel rather is coupling up to our our mandrel in the head. That looks good. All right, the last two adjustments are your slide stroke and also the rotary plate adjustment. It can shift back and forth. There's a couple of, of studs with nuts there on on uh, on each end of that plate. Now, if your height is cr critical, if your if your uh, <clears throat> machine is at a fixed height you can adjust your rotate those down adjust your stroke uh, to mate up with your height of your part off your work table and then rotate it up uh, this one here <clears throat> you can see that I've got some air lines here to help me out I've still got the rotary tied in but I, I wide in a, uh, a line and I've hooked it into the, uh, the the main air cylinder here so it's holding back pressure uh, of the slide against the back of the head on our later model VPMs, this is an old one, we have an air cylinder mounted on the on this head of the tooling and it would be good to put yet another Y in and put air to it. That holds this from collapsing. This one here is a spring-loaded one. The late model ones we have a, a, a air cylinder that, that holds that extended out. So now we have our, our mandrel in here and this is fixed. We've got our, our stroke set and most of our s small uh, cylinders like this are set at inch and a half. Um, so if, you're, if your height is not critical then you could just set your stroke at inch and a half and that should work out fine. And then the last adjustment like I say is the rotary mounting plate. And what we're looking for is this thing to stop, the whole thing to stop in a position to where there's no slop it just couples everything up so you've got your BPM tooling, your mandrel and they end up bottoming out against your push pin and then lock it into place and uh, you could check that if, you're, if you lock it down and it's a little far away you'll have a little slop you'll be able to feel it there just crack it loose, slide it in a little bit if it uh, bottoms out too early, you'll have a little bit of a gap between uh, right here on your slide stop. So you just want to get it to where it's zeroed out and everything is, is comes together at the same time when it bottoms out here. It's also bottoming out on your mandrel. 
Okay, I've reconnected my airlines everywhere and now I'm checking sensors, making sure that uh, uh, both of my sensors are coming on right at the end. Looks good. I'm going to check my rotary sensors. I like to have them come on about two lines before the end destination. Like right now, I just came on. You can see I'm about a line and a half, and that's pretty nice. Right about there, it's just under two lines. So that's, I think, is ideal. Now, let's see how things worked out. <laughs> 